Native Youth Program, or NYP, focuses on Aboriginal students ages 15 to 18. During their summer break, selected students work here at the Museum of Anthropology, where they give public tours and presentations, research the collection, their own cultures, and venture out on exciting field trips. Welcome, my name is Charlene Smoke. I'm Anishinaabe Mohawk Métis. A few years ago, I was coordinator for the Native Youth Program. This experience made a lasting impression on me, so like others, I'm very proud to be celebrating the NYP's 30th year. This work study, co-sponsored by the museum and the First Nations House of Learning, is the longest running public program at the museum. For 30 years, students have met and worked with artists, elders, and educators. Through these encounters, students develop many skills including public speaking, team building, and leadership. This video focuses primarily on the experience of this year's group as a way to honour and celebrate the 30 years of this unique museum program. I want you to breathe. Allow that deep energy to travel up all the channels of your legs up to your pelvis. We're going to go up. What I taught them was um, specifically a lot of theatre activities to sort of get their bodies loosened up and get them comfortable with themselves and with each other as a group. To be able to stand and speak better for when they're giving their tours. But not tense, sort of just loose. And uh, good, and remember to smile. <laughs> The youth train to give public tours both inside the galleries and outdoors on the museum grounds. This pole consists of a raven at the top, a frog underneath, followed by a sea bear with a cub. That was good, we'll move on. So this, uh, what I want you to know today is that you'll be coming down the path and going this way around, ending with... One of my, my main goals was to in their tours were to explain that Aboriginal artwork and art forms, culture, language uh, is a living culture and that everything comes together as one. Like in the New Channel, they have a saying that's Hishuk Ish Tsawak, which means everything is one. So I'm going to try to get numbers throughout the summer. This here is the ocean spray, referred to as the ironwood, which reflects its hardness and strength. Again, when workshopping how they're going to do their scripts. I used a lot of what I knew myself growing up and listening to the elders, listening to my parents, using curator expertise. I opened up the opportunity for the youth to give their own input and to give their, their own stories that they may have had from their communities. <laughs> and if you were caught holding a legal potlatch, you would either forfeit your regalia or you would go to jail. And that's the reason why you can see many of these pieces around the world, is because the Canadian government took it and sold it to other countries. I'm basically teaching people, so when they leave here, they have a good understanding of what, I guess you can say, a First Nation person is, and what the culture was like. Overall, I just feel good when I give a tour. And I'm from the Kowakiwak and Stadley Nation. I'm from the Nishka Territory. My first tour was with Kristoff, and it was really nerve-wracking because I didn't know much about all the pieces and I thought oh, I was no, going to no, make okay. mistakes. Um, <laughs> sorry. sorry. Um, the bentwood box is actually made from one piece, one big plank of wood, and they put three notches in it for the corners, and they would put it over a pit of fire, well, not a uh, pit of steam with rocks, and, and they would, when it became pliable, they would bend it into a box. I'm loud? Yeah. Oh, okay. You have, you have such a like, teary eyed voice. voice. Who, me? Yeah. I know, like, you know, like the like, nice voice that everyone like. Teary eyed? No, I said tour guide voice. Oh, I thought you said teary eyed. I'm like, do I seem like I'm sad? <laughs> <laughs> okay. If the paddles are in all at the same time, that's good, but if they're in at different times, that's almost like putting brakes on. Oh, wow. Oh, are you gonna jump in the bow? Can no. you go that way a bit? This year we went on a canoe trip with the Urban Native Youth Association, known as Anya. And experienced that, something that our ancestors have done for many years. I'm a curator at the museum. I also oversee the Native Youth Program every summer. 
I have the pleasure of hiring young Aboriginal University students to coordinate the Native Youth Program. I work with the coordinator and a member of the museum staff to hire energetic young Aboriginal high school students, who for many of them, it's their very first job and their very first interview. The interview process was like American Idol. There was like the three judges just sitting there as soon as I walked in, I was kind of nervous. You'd build alliances with other communities. and. Um, I was expecting something different, but it's been a lot funner than I thought it would be. Goats and fish, you'd make blankets and trade it for fish. You, it was a trading thing. At first, it's really scary because we're all native. And I come from East Van where it's a rainbow of people. And this was the first time I've ever been in a group where it's just native. And that was it. And just looking at each other and feeling each other out. What inspired me to be a, um, a participant in the program was how the kids just sort of take over and start teaching total strangers about the museum. I was really impressed, so that's why I wanted to get involved and I thought it'd be a good experience to work with youth. But I never thought I would become a teacher. It wasn't my goal, I just wanted to be in the museum. That's what pretty much inspired me to become a teacher was the Native Youth Program. The name Musqueam originates uh, to the meaning of people of the river grass because Musqueam lies just at the Fraser River. And what was really neat about the Native Youth Program was I felt totally included with everyone else and I was able to talk about my own heritage and represent Musqueam and I thought it was really neat. And again, these are Kuakiwak. And as you can tell, this is a male gender pole because of the long serpent. And this is a female pole because of the face. And the face would usually represent fertility. On a field trip to Haytham Interpretive Centre in Mission, the group experienced a pit house up close. So, can anyone give me some differences between this home and the longhouse? Underground. Underground. Good. So now when it comes time, the end of summer is coming and the beginning of winter, you're just going to move in here and all the heat's going to be trapped in here and it's going to keep you fairly warm. So warm that you wouldn't actually need a fire on a day-to-day -day basis. And this one here, it goes further back. also visited the Squamish Lillooet Cultural Centre in Whistler. The centre's youth ambassadors welcomed them warmly before touring them throughout. It was a great learning opportunity for the NYP students to connect with their Squamish Lillooet peers. Really? Yeah. You can use it as a mint. You just you can it. eat it? Like yeah. You know? I can? Yeah. yeah. If you want to, you can just... It does! Before the program, I, was, um, I wasn't really proud of my culture. I kind of gave in to the stereotypes. But then after working here, I kind of got to notice that that's not what First Nations people are all about. And I got to really appreciate my culture and learn a lot about myself. Just a little bit of history before we get started in our cedar bark class. Um, I was lucky enough to participate in the Native Youth Project when I was 15. So I actually came and participated for three years, actually two summers and three winters. This cedar bark that we're going to work with today has been stripped from the tree. And as I pull it, this bark peels off the tree almost as freely as a banana gets peeled. So depending on the height of your tree and what it is the tree is willing to sacrifice for you, this bark can strip off anywhere from say 30 to 40 to 50 feet. There we go. Oh, beauty. For like what we're doing today to make baskets, I want to remove the last little bits of this outer bark. If you just peel from your index finger to your baby finger. Excellent, good job. I had a lot of experience in the Native Youth Program. Um, public speaking, 
I also had the opportunity to explore my own identity as a First Nations woman and to connect with a lot of our communities. I took youth up to Willard Bay, which is my grandmother's surrogate home community. It was without fail we were welcomed, enthusiastically welcomed. It was phenomenal to have the opportunity for youth to see the, our culture being actively practiced in the big house and right there on the beach with those artists still conti continuing to create um, beautiful pieces that express who we are and our connection to the land and our environment and our community. I think my experience in the Native Youth Program gave me the opportunity to meet in particular other Native youth and to realize, oh, there's others that are also looking. And I was walking down the hallway and they all started like pretending to like do like a dance or something like that, but they were totally goofing off and they were like, hey, hi, like whatever. And like, um, the teacher wait, like- Do you get that hey, how long? Yeah, no. Yeah, that's yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that's I did, that's I what happened. That all the time. I get that all the time. And so I was like, excuse me, I need to get by. And they're like, hey, how are you? Hey, how are you? And I was like, shut up. I would have been like, you want to see a hey, how are you? No, <laughs> because like what racism is, is like ignorance, right? Like they don't know. So I mean with us working here, it's kind of like educating them, but also breaking down those, those stereotypes, right? To show them that, yeah, we're doing something and Hopefully making change. It was a lot about growth, a lot about, uh, I, I think, created the foundation of who I became, who I am today. The, the experience that my ancestors had fighting to hang on to their culture and practice their traditions despite laws banning us. You know, if that all natives were, uh, you know, a teepee, you know, horseman, riding type of thing, but as soon as I came to this museum, it definitely taught me a lot about my own heritage. I think it's given me more confidence in promoting culture and myself and where I am, who I come from. And just seeing the eyes of when you're explaining something and how we did it in our culture, like fishing and hunting, it opened up the people's eyes too, thinking that, you know, this was a real great culture. We're not just, you know, a beaded moccasin behind a glass or, you know, a carving. We're, we're real, we're here, we have a lot of differences and we want to share. 